Davison, someone you see around a good amount in this part of the country. I believe he's a regular playing at Nerd Rage games out of here at the Open this weekend. I know he has some classic top eights. I'm not super familiar with his resume, but he's somebody that I know I don't want to sit across from. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't accidentally end up in 6-0 in a format of skill testing as Pioneer, right? Absolutely not. Looks like Peter Ingram thought he was on the play. He's wrong. Botanical Sanctum is where Davison will start. We see our Broyal Grazer putting in a rivulet. Sometimes you just want to show off, go, oh, guess what? I have I have Choked Estuary and the island. This never happens. <laughs> and there it is. Estuary untapped for Ingram. Davison has turn two, Sylvan Scrying. Making it look easy. Lotus Field. Setting up pretty quick here. Yeah, we may be looking at an actual turn three kill over on Davidson's side at this point. And there is the Lotus Field. He's going to sacrifice those two other lands and go to Pete Ingram, who really needs some interaction and a way to close quickly. He might be in a lot of trouble already as he plays that island he revealed. Right, and this is scary. If he doesn't have something like a Drown in the Lock or a Counterspell in general, he may just be staring death in the face at this point. It's like we're calling for the floating mana counters as Davidson's going to cycle Vizier of Tumbling Sands. One blue floating, untap that field. <coughs> Draw a card for the cycle. I see a Fay of Wishes among the holding. Here's a Seder Wayfinder. Green man off the field this time. So it's going to be one green floating as well as one blue. Here comes the Wayfinder. Take a look at the top four. I imagine the Thespian stage would be the ideal find. Oh, yeah. You even have the two mana left over at the end to kind of lock out that second Lotus Field. There it is. Thespian stage grabbed and played. Uses that floating mana. Now he's got two Lotus Fields. And this is where you are really on edge as Peter Ingram. As he fires off a fatal push on a Wayfinder, I suppose you need some cards in your graveyard to dig through time. Right, exactly. This is him just actually trying to use his mana and start building towards that selection spell. Drowned Catacomb. Narsite Porter Avails. All right, this one's actually pretty good against a lot of what the Lotus Peach deck does. Right, so things like pour over the pages just, just actually get shut off under a Narset Porter Avails. Start cycling your Vizier is not very good. Right, you're just the world's worst hidden strings. <laughs> Narset's going to go down to three and find a Thought Erasure. And we'll see what Davidson can do about it. It looks like he has a Fay of Wishes. He might just actually have this. It looks like Underworld Breach and Fae of Wishes are in hand. Davison's going to think this turn through before making any game actions. Temple of Mystery, he'll scry one. Saw a Thespian stage on top, that's on the bottom now. Really looking for something in the vein of a Hidden Strings in order to actually just unlock all of your mana. It looks like Land, Fay of Wishes, Underworld breaches the hand, and he'll pass turn. Back over to Peter Ingram, I believe at least three lands in the hand. Or maybe actually four. We know about Thought Erasure, which he found off Narset last turn. And it's not a lot of cards in Davidson's hand, so that Thought Erasure is probably pretty good. Right, and Davidson also knows it's there, so this is a spot where he assumes he can rebuild from it, either by having Fay of Wishes grab, say, an Underworld Breach, or the Underworld Breach rebuying the Fay of Wishes. So if there's a specific piece he's missing, like that Hidden Strings, he kind of just can sit on his hands for one, maybe two more draw steps. Narset's going down to one for Ingram. Going to go to work sculpting the hand just a little bit more. And this is actually a point where it pays off that Ingram fired off that fatal push over on Seder Wayfinder. He would not be able to just roll this Narset down whenever he wanted to if it was just taking one a couple of times. Yeah, absolutely true. Finds the dig through time off of the Narset. It's not a bad one. That Thought Erasure will accelerate getting cards in the bin, too. 
pretty good setup here for Ingram as he does fire off the Erasure. And we see Botanical Sanctum, Fay of Wishes, and the Underworld Breach. He's going to grab the Fay of Wishes. And he will surveil. He's going to put Mystical Dispute in the bin. Guess everybody's main deck in that one. I mean, it's just so good right now. All right, back to Keenan Davidson. Has the, all of the deck's namesake cards. Has Lotus, has Breach. Oh, was that Hidden Strings off the top? That could be huge. That, I think that would just be it. Yeah, he's going quickly to float some mana. We saw a lot of pause thinking about his turn last turn. He's he's going immediately now. Oh, it feels like there's something where he's just going through the motions. Red mana, blue mana, hidden strings, untap two lotus fields. That's going to work. Down to one red and one blue in pool. There's Underworld Breach, and that resolves. So now he gets access to everything in the graveyard, gets access to that granted, has that hidden strings there for some untaps, a good mix of cards in the graveyard. Starts with hidden strings, that one's going to escape. Has a bunch of blue mana floating. So with that on the stack, it's five blue and one red. Untap both the fields, that works. Plenty of cards left over to cast this granted on the Fey of Wishes. Going to use most of the floating blue for that. Going to have to exile some cards to escape. But this is a spot where you just go find Tome Scour, and then you get to go through your whole deck, right? Exactly. And there it is. Pretty innocuous card. Hasn't seen a lot of constructed play before this deck. But there's Tome Scour. Tart himself. Five cards go into the bin. And then plenty of mana here, so you just to like get to keep using the strings, get as much mana as you need. Tome Scour milling yourself. Davidson's explaining that there's kind of a loop happening here. All these cards continue to exist in your graveyard. Tome Scour gets you enough stuff. At the end of it, you granted. You have a Jace Wielder of Mysteries. You're going to have no cards in your deck. Right. Eventually, you hit a point where... So Hidden Strings nets you four mana, which is two Tome Scours and another Hidden Strings and so on. So you actually are exiling, you know, nine cards to do this loop and putting ten in your graveyard. Maths. Quick maths at that. Quick maths. And Ingram is just going to take a look at the deck. Yeah, I think he knows that what what's happening here. We we know uh, the kind of deterministic kill through no disruption here, but Ingram does get to see that face up mystical dispute. He probably expects there's something going on in the sideboard, but having that information face up is of some value to Ingram. Yeah, absolutely, because these decks do generally have a pretty slim sideboard because of how Fey of Wishes taxes that resource. Mm -hmm. Still plenty of mana. We're tome scouring one at a time, escaping three cards every time. Davidson still with three blue floating, two untapped lotus fields, and another land to boot. I gather that Ingram has already had lunch. <laughs> not, not a rush on this one. Oh, no. And maybe it's a spot where, like we said before, you just want to see what the what the flex slots actually are. If he if Davidson's going to kill with Thassa's Oracle, then maybe you want to leave like a fatal push in or something. Sure. You saw how much fun Ingram was having on his face there. Just time of his life. Look, sometimes you can concede, but why would you concede when you can lose for five minutes? <laughs> The longer you spend losing, the more complaint equity you accrue. Love a love complaint equity. Been going over a lot of twiddle effects, a lot of redraws. Just saw the 1x expansion explosion milled over for Davidson there. 
That's another flex slot in the deck. More Tome Scouring, Grazers, Wayfinders. The Nuts and Bolts. You know what they are? They're, they're three cards is what they are to escape the Tome Scour again. And there's the rest of the deck. Now it's time to reach for the sideboard with Granted once again. I guess Hidden Strings first. You can make plenty of mana. A lot of cards left over here. Yeah, you might as well just make sure to cover all your bases. Can't take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> and there is Granted. And Jace Telepath Unbound, the Planeswalker Laboratory Maniac. I would like to draw a card. I don't have a library. Please target Ingram with it. Yeah, Narset stops you from drawing an additional card. So, uh, yeah, Davidson just kind of uh -oh. has to pass the turn then, huh? Uh-oh. <laughs> It's still going to be the matter of Ingram getting the Jace off the battlefield. But, uh, yeah, Narset, um, some impact here. Oh, actually. I suppose it depends what Davison's left in the graveyard. Right. I, mean, I think his expansion explosion is still available for him. Yeah, so you see him go to work with some hidden strings, make some mana. Just needs to do one damage to the Narset. He's going to cast Granted again. Blink of an Eye found off the Granted. Now, this is one I actually saw Paul Muller have a little judge call away from the table earlier about. The question is, if you kick Blink of an Eye on Narset, do you draw a card? The answer is yes. Right. With that, you would. With something like Expansion Explosion, you would not, because Explosion would, say, take the loyalty off it, but it stays in play until state-based effects would check, which doesn't happen mid-resolution, and it's a mm. whole thing. Well, it looks like maybe Davidson wanted to take a page out of Paul's book, because I don't think he kicked the Blink of an Eye. So the Narset was bounced. I th it looks like he has a graveyard to draw a card again somehow. But the Blink of an Eye would have done it on its own. Now it looks like he's going for kind of the flashy play. Hidden strings into explosion, I think, is on the horizon. Maybe he kicks the blink of an eye now on one of his own permanents. But it looks like enough cards are there. And one last go at hidden strings. And another one last big tap. There's three three red. I think we're going to five blue. Explosion. For at least one, probably just one. Yeah, X equals one. I would like to draw a card now, please. <laughs> Took the scenic route. Oh, yeah. Did Keenan Davidson, but still got there. Up a game over Pete Ingram. And this is a matchup that I think is a big one with a lot of eyes on it in this weekend. It's one of those things where I hear from players on both decks that they think they're favored. Yeah, and a lot of that comes down to the specifics of the games themselves. And I know that sounds kind of obvious, right? <laughs> it's magic after all. But a lot of times it is pile independent understanding how to sequence certain spells and the inverter deck as well kind of has two halves to the deck and if you draw the fatal push half 
it's going to look embarrassing, especially for a breach player if the breach player just already thought they were favored in the first place and the other deck just fatal pushes a wayfinder and dies. <laughs> right. And this is where the Mirror Runner players believe that their strength largely comes from as Ingram reaches for the sideboard. It's just more functional cards here. Three Jace Friends Prodigy, two Heroes Downfall, two Damping Sphere, two Legion's End, another Narset, a Cast Down, a Cletus, a Doom Blade, a Thassa's Oracle, and a Mystical Dispute. So a few options here. Yeah, so there's a lot that I would see expect to see Ingram bring in, mostly cutting things that are creature removal, things in that vein. Jace Friends Prodigy is something that makes all of your hand disruption that much better. Just your proactive interaction in general is going to be great with JVP. Uh, Damping Sphere, obvious hate card against both a Storm deck and a deck with Lotus Field. We saw in the finals of the Players Tour, uh, Corey Burkhart just completely win an entire game on the back of that one. And then Narset, great option to have access to. Mystical Dispute, great card. And we could even see Ingram reach for that copy of Thassa's Oracle if he wants to be able to combo more aggressively. And for Keenan Davidson, a lot of this is just a wish board for Fae of Wishes, right? Um, so you can see the sideboard on screen there, a lot of silver, silver bullets. I'm just going to ask you, do any of these stand out as a card you think Davidson will actually board in? He seems to be moving cards around. Yeah, so I could see on Ravel the A they're coming in. That's one that tags Damping Sphere. Uh, and the other one that I could see is possibly Thought Distortion. That's a card that is just very good at tagging any sort of permission package that Ingram might be trying to lean into and you're not really going to be able to wish for it. Yeah, Most granted for Thought Distortion is kind of a big ask. Exactly. Players are comfortable here in their Karnox chairs. Biggest improvement we've had to the feature match area, really ever, I would say. And you could have your own at home, and you can save 10% at checkout if you go to karnox.com slash scg. I don't know. I think the biggest improvement we've had to the feature match area was at... What was it? Baltimore 2019. There was a team event. Uh, there were three people who graced the, the feature match area with their presence. The the team of, uh, I think one of the last names was Lynn. Another was Overturf. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a nice squad. Yeah, no, I, they, they did okay for themselves. <laughs> Ingram shocked for a water grave on one. That was for an end step opt. So you see a sheltered thicket for Davidson. Thought erasure on turn two off a of drowned catacomb. Get a look at Davidson's hand. Blaststone, mystical dispute, blink of an eye, Sylvan scrying, strategic planning, a second Sylvan scrying, and a thespian stage. And the big thing here is that Davidson is answer to a copy of damping sphere in this blast zone that can't be thought seized has two cards that grab lotus field which means they get, that is kind of thought seized proof so to speak has thespian stage and everything else is pretty replaceable i spent too much money this week picking up portal three kingdoms strategic plannings yeah i'm i'm sure most amounts of money would be too much money for oh that. yeah it's a stupid category and it was a lot even for that category yeah i and you know honestly i i think i like the commander ones that's fair i hate this our devastation one and ingram does too he's gonna put that right in the graveyard nobody should cast that it's it, all about the vendetta. <laughs> no strategic decision here at all. Not at all. Just no, this is not a gate watch card. Here's some planning for Ingram, though, as he surveils a Narset to the graveyard. That would communicate to me that it is he may be landlight if I'm on David's side. Yeah, Narset seems really good, right? Exactly. Blast zones the land for Davison. There's one of those Sylvan scryings. Lotus Field, no big surprise there. Who could have seen this coming? <laughs> Weird how the, the, the card tutored for the name set card of the deck. I wonder if I wonder if that's where Davidson put it in his deck. <laughs> you know, I play against them to get Blast Zone a lot, but it kills a lot of the permanents I like playing, so a lot going on there. 
All right, Ingram has at least a third land. There is a basic island in the holdings. And actually had two. Fedipool's tapped plus Jace Friend's Prodigy. So he actually actively passed on this Narset. Okay, so in that case, it may be he's trying to fill his graveyard in order to transform Jace Friend's Prodigy and just shred Davidson's hand. Sure. Yeah, that's the faster route to get that Thought Erasure back. All right, here's that other Sylvan Scrying. Davidson goes, finds Botanical Sanctum. That one less exciting. Pretty nice combination, though, with the Lotus Field. You sack your land, and it comes on tap later. And Davison's going to give Ooh. up the Blast Zone to play the Lotus Field. This could be an opening for a Damping Sphere from Ingram to just end the game. Back over to Ingram. Some options here. Doesn't look like any of them are Damping Sphere. Maybe Jace could help on that front, though. Ingram still knows about Thespian Stage, Mystical Dispute, and Blink of an Eye. So he has the potential to maybe get up to Jace Transform this turn, and he has a Thought Erasure. But that stuff doesn't really seem like anything you care about hitting with a discard spell. No, and... The other angle that we haven't really brought up yet with binning this Narset off the Thought Erasure, it may just be he's trying to get to a point where he can win the game. Sure. It's a lot of what Davidson had at that point is not something that Ingram's going to be great at interacting with. It looks like there is another Erasure in hand for Ingram. That is where he will start his turn. So you see that blink of an eye, that dispute. It looks like Fate of Wishes has joined the hand. Botanical Sanctum. I'm trying to get eyes on the over middle pages, card. I think. I would believe that. It looks like a short first word. <laughs> well, it was poor over the pages, but Fate of Wishes was the take. And then the surveil. Largely ignored as we see Ingram go for a uh, fable passage for an island. Now the Jace will activate. It's in line to transform right away, discarding island. And we'll see if Ingram wants to double dip on the hand. Yep, going for that right away. Minus three on the Jace. Thought erasure on flashba flashback. Ingram thinking about it. He almost selected Mystical Dispute. Goes for pour over the pages. And I like this because now Davidson doesn't actually have a great path to winning the game, which as the game progresses and Ingram just naturally makes land drops, Mystical Dispute will find itself invalidated the normal magic playing way by putting lands on the table. Yep. I will pay three mana. There is Thespian Stage, so Davidson leaving up the combination of Copy the Field and Mystical Dispute there. That Pretty easy. Ingram's going to plus the Jace to three on his turn. No spells, though. He knows about Dispute. And you see Davidson go for the double field. And we'll see if he can do anything with it. Strategic planning off the top is a start. Yep, that's the draw and the cast. One blue floating. Let's be in the stage, Breeding Pool, and Fae of Wishes. That's a real card. Yeah, lands to the bin, the fate of the hand. To quote the Oscar Mayer commercials, oh, I wish. <laughs> I, You have left me at a loss for words. Have you never wished that you were an Oscar Mayer wiener? I know I've said those words, but I don't think I ever meant it. Well, everyone would love you. Right. That's the song. It's literally the song. Well, I think it's closer to a documentary, but sure. <laughs> Ingram's going to cast an op, square to the bottom, draw. Here's Thoughtseize with three mana up. Ooh. Big draw. Yeah. Gunning for that fay of wishes that Davidson found, likely. Yeah, we see the hand again. Some stuff he knew about. Fea wishes. Looks like another 
poor was found. The phase hitting the bin, though. Sorry, that's hidden strings. So the hand is mystical dispute, blink of an eye, hidden strings. And something that Blink is actually representing is a way for Davidson to stop Ingram from winning. If Ingram were to, say, try to win with a j the big Jace, then Davidson could literally just make Ingram lose the game on the spot. That's a good play. Yeah, love love for my opponent to lose the game on the spot. Pretty, pretty good for Ingram that that is face up. <laughs> Should help him navigate that. That Thoughtseize, pretty impactful card in these lightly interactive combo mirrors. And here is another one for Ingram. It was a blast zone drawn and played for Davidson, which is a little whatever on this board. Well, it does force Ingram to actually go ahead and pull the trigger on this Jace this turn, rather than actually getting to choose when he Thoughtseizes. I would expect Davidson to roll this blast zone up to two, untap, and then likely crack it on the Jace if Ingram doesn't choose to minus it this turn. At long last, Thoughtseize takes Dispute, Ingram to 12. And you're saying you expect a minus three on the Jace here. Correct. And, you know, we do see Ingram with an Inverter and a Thassa's Oracle in hand. He may just take that line instead. Yeah, here is Inverter. We want to review the library here. Davidson's going to do that. A couple opts, a couple thought sees, Narset, thought erasure, a couple lands. So the opts are actually pretty nice here because they chew through your, they churn through your deck kind of quickly. Same with uh, Narset, actually. Yeah. Okay, just cards that get you through two cards. Is there a combination of cards that gets through all of them next turn? I don't think so. Um, or at least enough of them, since there's a blue source. So you can opt into opt. You can draw Fabled Passage if you haven't drawn the island yet and fetch that up. That gets you through four cards. Ooh, all right. So here's one. If he has Thassa's Oracle in hand, you can Narset into opt into Fabled Passage Island Thassa's Oracle. Which I believe should be exactly enough cards out of the deck. All right, well... We'll find out soon, one way or the other. The Inverter is down. Davidson has a lot of mana in a Blast Zone. But he has kind of has to speculate how Ingram's trying to win the game. I mean, maybe Ingram's just trying to attack for six a bunch. Davidson's going to use Blink of an Eye, kick at that Jason draw card. You know, this is actually kind of the luxury of the inverter deck, because it does get to attack from two angles at the same time. A 6-6 six, six for four with flying is a very real threat. I mean, yeah, when you're, when you're playing a deck that just doesn't play to the battlefield, that creature is large. Exactly. And you, you can't do anything that's going to stop Ingram from attacking. You're not threatening anything on the way back. Just a thespian stage and a pass for Davidson. Now we'll get some insights onto the long-term planning for Ingram here. We know he just picked up that Jace again off of that blink of an eye. He's going to play an island and play Jace again. And inverter beatdowns are coming in. Davidson to 14. And Ingram will pass. Blast Zone is going up to 4. Thespian stage is going to copy Blast Zone, so there's a backup zone. I like that quite a bit from Davison. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this is the spot where now Ingram's actual resources total are finite. You'll see this in some other games uh, where, where if there's a small deck size, both players just plan to make specific cards exchange with other specific cards. We see Davidson doing that here where he's kind of thinking, all right, well, if I can check this box and this box, then I don't know if Ingram can actually win the game anymore. Yavamaya Coast is the land for turn for Davidson. Ingram's going to attack once again with the inverter. Davidson goes to eight. We see Ingram opt. Going to go to the – think about where he wants to put it. He's, he's looking at the scry right now and looking at the size of his deck. And after that review – He's still thinking about it, but he has now kept it on top. Here's a Thought Erasure. 
at Hidden Strings is gone. The leftover for Davidson is Yabamaya Coast. Jace will activate. Ingram discards Mystical Dispute. That one's not going to get any value against this many lands. And there's Thassa's Oracle. Looks like three pips to me. Ooh. And Peter Ingram. So he did have the combo there. It's going to take us to game number three. Yeah, in that spot, it's a little strange, but it may have been better to just have one of your Blast Zones on two if you weren't planning to actually stop the Inverter that turn. That way you actually have a little bit more protection against that sort of play, but it looks like Davidson may have also just been choosing to play around the Jace instead of the Oracle. Sure. The, the excuse me, Jace Wielder of Mysteries. Right. Not Friends Prodigy. Blast Zone on four covers that. Exactly. Oracle's a whole different affair. Right. Peter Ingram, very good navigation there, and who's surprised coming off of a very recent Players Tour Top 8. And a lot of success here on the SCG Tour. Already has a trophy this year. Not his first all-time either. Actually, three open wins in his career. No slouch by any stretch. You don't end up with a double-digit number of open Top 8s by accident. No, not at all. Three top eights and a win last year. And this, this career was also interrupted by a stint at Wizards of the Coast. Mm -hmm. Really impressive stuff. Has not been cold at all since he came back. Didn't feel like he missed a beat. No, no. He felt like he came back, spent about a month shaking the rust off, and then was right back at it again and decided, you know, I didn't really get to win anything while I was at Watsi. Maybe I should... I, th I think I think I'm just gonna mess around and do it again. Yeah, it was 2016. He won an open in this building with Jeskai Nahiri, and he's like, he was on the metagame gurus, and he says, "All right, I'm gonna disappear for a while. I'm gonna design the game." Did that for a while. It was fun, and then he said, "You know what? I liked playing and winning a little bit more." Yep. Seems to be pretty good at doing that. Both players go into six in our deciding game three here. This is something that the Inverter deck is going to feel a little bit better about because it needs a lower quantity of resources to actually win the game. And most of its game plan is actually just reducing both players' resources. Yeah. Lower resource needs. Also, both players mulliganing. Ingram's the one with the thought seizes. Definitely some things to like on his side here. Being on the draw with the thought seizes as well. Hmm. Plus one card. Do you think there's any matchups in Pioneer? Like in the Demir Inverter Mirror, do you think people have explored being on the draw? It strikes me as a kind of matchup where maybe I'd be into it. I subscribe to the Tom Ross school of thought that nobody is remotely on the adequate level of experimenting with being on the draw. Same. I think... I'm trying to think... One of the matchups I really liked doing, it was a Tarka Red and Standard. Sure. Always chose to draw in that mirror because Everything so just heavy. traded constantly. Right. You just needed to draw enough commands to actually win. Right. I would take the draw always in the modern Grixis Delver mirror when that was a deck. Never lost a mirror in my life. I mean, sick 2-0 brags. <laughs> yeah, both <laughs> matches. I won both <laughs> matches. Players underway here. Davidson is going to find a Lotus Field off of Sylvan Scrying. You see Ingram is going to fire off a Thought Erasure. Sees that Lotus Field, a Thespian Stage, a Breach, a Strings, and another Sylvan Scrying. And, yep, Breach is gone. Kind of felt like a one-card hand. Yeah. Yeah, whenever you're using any of the hand disruption tools, your goal as the person actually using it is generally to find the piece that your opponent has one of and take that away as to actually just kind of knock their hand out from under them. And Thassa's oracles surveilled away. Turn three for Keenan Davidson. Gonna fire off Sylvan's crying. We know the we know he already has Lotus Field. Blast Zone's the fine. That makes sense. Kind of the uh, missing utility land in the hand, as it were. And there's the field. Sacrifice the other two lands. 
And can Ingram shut the door with a damping sphere this game? We haven't seen him go on easy mode yet. Just an island and a pass. I think that means no. It looks like no. <laughs> feels like no. If it looks like no and it feels like no. I can't smell it from here, but I imagine it smells like no too. Thespian stage pass for Davidson, and here's Jace Wielder of Mysteries on four for Ingram. A pretty reasonable value card in its own right. And ironically, this is one of the matchups where it is hard to decide who you're supposed to target with the plus. Sure, you don't want to give them gas for their breach. Exactly, but you also don't want to put too many cards in your graveyard. Right, I see this decision is giving Ingram some pause. Right, I think I see an inverter in Ingram's hand. So if you want to just have a library that has Thassa's Oracle Thought Erasure... It's hard to imagine you want to put too many more cards in your in your next library. Right. You want that to be a small stack. He had a look at Davidson's hand pretty recently. The only spell he knows about is the hidden strings. Ooh. Ooh, is it going to be no activation Ooh. pass? <laughs> Oh, you can't not draw a card, right? The secret zero ability. I don't have what it takes to not draw a card. Pete Ingram, it looks like he does. He leaves the Jace on this, four. This is why Peter Ingram is 6-0 in this tournament and in the feature match area, and we're just talking about it. Yeah. Textbook. Incredible. The downside on both activations is too high. He has the combo rolled up. Why bother? You see Davidson... Gets the second Lotus Field going at that stage. Starts his turn with the strategic planning. He has a string. Can he get to a full combo? <sighs> well, whenever the strategic planning decision is very close, it's usually them trying to figure out if they're trying to play defensively or offensively. So that leads me to believe that it isn't impossible to combo this turn. It's whether or not it would actually go anywhere. Sure. So he passed on a land and a ratchet bomb. Scries with Temple of Mystery and passes. He has a Lotus Feel untapped. We'll see if Ingram goes for the combo here. Davidson could just cast a Mystical Dispute for three mana, but if Ingram has Thought Season combo, or like Mystical Dispute in combo, then he's golden. Here's the Inverter. Uh-oh. What do you got, Davidson? Oh, no. He's got nothing. And Peter Ingram is going to go 2-1, go advancing to 7-0. We'll see him on day two. And no surprise, just on an absolute.